All right, so we're happy to be here with um, Omar Gonzalez from Ferris State University. Welcome. Um, I'm Alyssa Merton with the Oceana College Access Network, and we are excited to share a little bit about Ferris State University with you today. So with that said, I'm going to pass that over to Omar and let him give us um, information and then we'll ask him some questions that students have submitted towards the end and we'll do a little question and answer. Um, if you do have a question, you can go ahead and pop it in the chat or ask at the end when we're ready for that. So go ahead, Omar, take it away. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. And I am Omar Gonzalez, I'm Senior Coordinator of Recruitment at Ferris State University located in Big Rapids, Michigan. And just wanted to give you a little bit of information about us, some updates, some new information about what we're doing for admissions process and all that good stuff. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, brief history of Ferris State, founded in 18, 1884. So one of the older universities in the state of Michigan. Just wanted to show you a quick photo of where, how far we've come. This is our very first class back in 1884. Uh, the gentleman right there in the middle in the gray suit, that's Mr. Woodbridge Nathan Ferris. That's who our institution is named after. That is Mr. Ferris. And Mr. Ferris had the mindset that education should be available to everyone and anyone who wanted to be educated. And that is quite evident looking at our first class of students. We had 15 students in the first class. Out of those 15 students, we had five women, which is kind of unusual to see in the 1800s, uh, that many women in comparison to men pursuing higher education. So very inclusive for the times as before women had the right to vote in the United States. So currently we have about 11,165 students enrolled at Ferris State University. Uh, this includes all of our students on the main campus in Big Rapids. This also includes any of our satellite campuses throughout the state of Michigan. We have several campuses housed within community colleges throughout the state of Michigan. Uh, so Traverse City, Grand Rapids area, Muskegon area, um, all over the state of Michigan, 21 off-campus uh, locations where students can take classes and programs in their entirety. This number also includes Kendall College of Art and Design. That is our art school. It's located downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. It is the same exact, exact application for Ferris as it is for Kendall. The only difference is that Kendall's going to require a portfolio of artwork before you get admitted to Kendall College of Art and Design. That's the only difference as far as application goes. Um, on the main campus in Big Rapids, uh, right now, uh, given the unusual circumstances of the year, our number is quite a bit lower. Usually we have about 10,000 students on the main campus. It's just shy of uh, 10,000 this year. And this map shows where a number of our students are coming from. Most of our students are coming from Michigan. That is our largest student population. Outside of Michigan, probably our highest out of state population is the greater Chicago land area. So we get a lot of students from out of state. Something that we have uh, going on for out of state students is that we have in state tuition for all out of state students. So that is a, a great benefit for students in the surrounding areas that are looking to pursue higher education. We also recruit students from all over the country. Some of our programs are kind of unique to Ferris State. We get a lot of students from California, Florida. Uh, we're one of the uh, few schools in the country that offers a pro golf management program, pro tennis management program. And then we also have a lot of unique programs in the area of engineering technology, uh, such as some of the trade type programs. We offer a lot of bachelor's degrees in those areas. So we're one of the few schools in the country that offers a bachelor's degree in heating, ventilation, and cooling, construction management, automotive management, uh, plastics engineering, rubber engineering. So a lot of those hands-on type programs, we offer a lot of pro a lot of bachelor's degrees in there. Um, and this map actually does not show the hundreds and hundreds of international students we get every single year as well. We get several students from all over the world. Our Office of International Education works two ways where we recruit students from all over the world. And then we also send our students to go study abroad at our sister schools all over the world. So if you're interested, you can study abroad um, at one of our sister schools, usually uh, goes along with your major, and our study abroad programs last anywhere from two weeks to maybe a month, maybe the summer, maybe an entire semester if you'd like to. So all you have to do is walk into our Office of International Education. They'll let you know of upcoming opportunities. Highly recommend studying abroad if you have the opportunity to. I studied abroad during grad school at Ferris State. I was able to go to Ireland for two weeks um, in Dublin, Ireland. Got to learn about education in Europe and education in Ireland. So that was really amazing. It's kind of like an educational vacation. That you, you'll learn a lot about uh, something in your major, but then you'll also get to learn, go on some cultural excursions and learn about the country that you're studying abroad in. Continuing on, uh, something we're proud to have at Ferris State University with one of the lowest student to faculty ratios out of public universities in the state of Michigan being 16 to one. And why this is important, what this means to you is that in your classrooms, to your professors, you're not gonna be one of thousands of thousands of students that every uh, professor interacts with every semester. You'll be one of a couple hundred. So your professors get to know you a little bit better. And um, 
Our classrooms are typically about 25 students or less. And a quick note about our professors, every single professor that we hire at Ferris State has, is coming from their industry in which they are teaching about and have at least their master's degree or doctorate degree. So we actually don't have any grad assistants, any teacher's assistants teaching any of our classes, only professors with master's degree or higher. So how that benefits our students is if you're looking for letters of recommendation, your professors get to know you a little bit better. If you are looking for internship opportunities, about 70% of students at Fair State, regardless of major, participate in some sort of internship, talk to your professors. If you're looking for employment opportunities, maybe you're looking for a summer job. My younger brother graduated last summer with his bachelor's degree in heating, ventilation, and cooling. And he wanted a summer job while he was a student at Ferris. He just talked to one of his professors and one of his professors connected him to an opportunity in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where he was able to work in the summertime, come back the following summer like he never left and even coming, come back during holiday break time when he was back at home. So that was all started with a conversation with one of his professors. So they, are, they will connect you to industry. So they're there as a resource for you. And what does it take to get into Ferris State? So we have a couple ways to get into Ferris State. So we, were, we are in our third, going on fourth year of doing what is called test optional admissions consideration. Now, what that is, now our, our criteria typically for that is 3.0 or higher. Right now, we are actually looking at 2.5 GPA or higher for test, admis test optional admissions consideration. So if you have at least a 2.5 and would like to apply to Ferris State, our application is completely free and we'll ask you in the application if you'd like to go test optional, yes or no. We recommend that students go ahead and do the test optional right now if you haven't taken an ACT or SAT test. Um, and if you are planning on taking an ACT, SAT test, uh, as long as you list Ferris State as one of the schools to receive the test scores, uh, we'll automatically update any scholarships you might be eligible for. All right, so we, we encourage students to go ahead and get the application out of the way and if you do take an SAT in the future, uh, th that, that's gonna help you with any scholarships you might get. So big difference in the different types of applications, our traditional application, GPA and SAT or ACT, um, the scholarship's gonna look a little bit different from uh, test optional, but we'll get to scholarships a little bit later. Live, learn community, something that you can look forward to at Ferris State is if you choose to live on campus, we do have an opportunity called Live, Learn Communities. So for any students looking at pre-optometry or pre-pharmacy, we do have a Live Learn community for pharmacy optometry students called POSIT, P-O-S-I-T, stands for Pharmacy Optometry Scholars in Training. And what that is, you get paired up with a roommate who's also in pharmacy or optometry, and then you also get a mentor who's in the pharmacy or optometry program. Um, another Live Learn community that's, that's pretty big at Ferris is our Honors Program. And Honors Program has let us know that any student who has been accepted to Ferris State is eligible to apply to the Honors Program. So we look at GPA, we look at SAT, but those are not the only determining factors to get into the honors program. We actually look at your leadership experience from high school. So if you're part of any kind of clubs, if you're part of any sports teams, if you're part of any kind of youth groups, if you volunteer in your community, anything that shows some sort of leadership is gonna be taken into consideration for acceptance in the honors program. And why consider the honors program? One of the big reasons why is that your freshman year, you get a scholarship that buys out the other half of a residence hall room. So you get a single room to yourself at no extra cost. Um, so if that's something you'd like to uh, have as a single room to yourself, no roommate, that is a nice way to do so at, at no extra cost. And being part of the honors program, there's a lot of uh, different conferences and leadership opportunities that you get to participate in. Um, some of these conferences, uh, you get to travel a little bit out of state and uh, a lot of resume building opportunities uh, as part of the honors program. So how much does it all cost? If you were to ask me how much does everything cost, for one academic, academic year or two semesters of school, I'll tell you our estimated total cost is about 24,154. And the breakdown of that cost is tuition and fees. Most students in order to graduate within four years take 14 credits a semester. So that's equivalent of four classes. Two of those classes probably have a lab attached to that and that comes up to 12,571. Room and board. So our policy with room and board is that unless you live within a 50, five zero mile radius of campus, we ask that you stay on campus for at least your first year. And that comes out to 22,613. And that room and board includes all of your amenities, includes all of the utilities. It also includes the silver meal plan. The silver meal plan is the lowest meal plan that we offer, and that is actually unlimited. So you can go to either of our cafeterias as many times as you like. We have the Rock Cafe and the Quad Cafe um, unlimited. So you can go as many times as you like, and you can even swap out two of those meals a day 
at our food truck on campus or any of the convenience stores to select from a list of items that count towards a meal. So next we have some estimated costs. Estimated costs because this is something that we don't necessarily bill you for, but what you can expect to pay during the school year. So books and supplies that could vary, but we estimate it's about 859 for the year. And that cost is based on our bookstore and brand new books at the bookstore. Uh, the bookstore also has a has used books that are a little bit cheaper and our bookstore also has a service where you can rent out textbooks for the semester and then return them at the end of the semester once you're done. Travel, this is what we think students spend possibly going home on the weekends or maybe visiting friends at other schools, other colleges, personal miscellaneous, what students might spend outside of campus, maybe dining off campus or purchasing toiletries or clothing throughout the school year. So that's where we get that estimated yearly total cost of education. Leaves us into scholarship information. So these scholarships, we call them the WNF or Woodbridge Nathan Ferris scholarships. And these scholarships are automatically awarded based on merit. So I spoke about test optional. Uh, those scholarships look a little bit different. The dollar amount I believe is still for, for next fall is actually uh, being reworked as we speak. Our financial aid office and uh, the board of trustees are, are, are meeting to possibly um, offer different dollar amounts for more and more tier uh, levels for our test optional scholarships. So I don't want to hand those out or, or speak about those right now. Um, but these are our typical scholarships with a GPA and SAT requirement. So if you apply, apply to Ferris State, you have at least a 3.0 and get at least a 1040 on the SAT. That's a $1,500 scholarship you get every single year for up to four years. The dollar amount is going to go up the higher your GPA and the higher your SAT is all the way up to our founder scholarship, which is 3.9 GPA and 1350 SAT or 31 ACT. That's $10,000 every year for up to four years. Now, a couple things to know about these scholarships is that we do require our students to meet both of the criteria. Sometimes we might have a student who has a 3.5 GPA, but maybe you got a 1040 on the SAT. You'd get the Ferris Crimson Scholarship, the lower of those two criteria. And vice versa, if you score really high in the SAT, like if you get a 1210 SAT, but maybe you got a 3.0, it, your cumulative GPA is a 3.0, that's, uh, you'd still be looking at the Ferris Crimson Scholarship, the lower of those two criteria. You can retake any test as many times as you'd like, and we automatically update your scholarship if you're eligible for it. So if you do test optional, if you haven't taken the SAT, no worries, feel free to just do test optional. We can at least get your admissions decision processed, and later on in, in the year, or even next year, if you're able to take an SAT, you can retake or take an a SAT, ACT as many times as you'd like, we automatically update any scholarships you might be eligible for. So these scholarships are automatically awarded. There is no deadline for these scholarships and there's no cap to how many students can get these scholarships. So these are automatically awarded once you apply to Ferris State. In addition to these scholarships, we do have a number of competitive scholarships. Uh, those can be accessed once you are accepted to Ferris State into your student account. And um, the, the, the window to apply for those scholarships typically is anywhere between December 1st through March 1st. And um, you can apply for as many of those competitive scholarships as you like. So though these automatic scholarships don't have a deadline, our competitive scholarships do. And uh, we'll be emailing you once you are accepted to Ferris State, letting you know when those are open and ready to uh, uh, start applying for those. Campus safety. So something you can expect at Ferris State is we do have a, a fully liaison police department that's on campus. So they are always open 24 seven, even during the holiday breaks, even when classes are closed or class, classes are delayed, you'll be the first to know. Um, the, the police department is always open 24 seven. All of our residence halls have, have a key card swipe system in the front and that key card is only gonna work there if you live there. So if you have a friend visiting from across campus, that you'd like to um, have over to work on homework or just hang out, you're responsible for letting your guest in and you're responsible for your guest while they are visiting you. Parking permits, you're allowed to have a car on campus. Freshmen, yes, are allowed to have a car on campus. It is $130 for the entire school year. So two semesters worth of parking for $130. Uh, blue emergency lights, those kind of look like call boxes attached to most of our buildings on campus. They do have a bright blue, blue light on top of them. And um, that's a call box that connects you to dispatch on campus. So if any kind of emergency you might need, those are all throughout campus. Most buildings have those at one of the ends of the entrances of the buildings. And foot patrol, so I mentioned that our police department is always always uh, open. Uh, we do always have uh, at least two officers on patrol at all times around campus, and they can help with any kind of emergency within a matter of minutes around campus. And emergency text alerts, so it's an optional service. You can submit your number online through Ferris's website if you would like to receive emergency text alerts. 
It is the same information that is emailed out to all the students. Uh, most students are, are more likely to check a text, if you're, especially if you're out and about, maybe between classes rather than email. Uh, but it's, you'll be the first to know if classes uh, are canceled due to snow or delayed, any inclement weather, anything like that. Any kind of emergency information is going to be sent out to the student, the entire student body. So that is a lot of information in a very short amount of time about Ferris State. But I um, wanted to provide our information there. Um, admissions at ferris.edu is our email. And ferris.edu forward slash apply. It is completely free to apply. And it only takes about maybe 10 minutes of your time to apply to Ferris State. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, participants, if you want to unmute to ask questions or if you want to put them in the chat, that's fine. Um, so we are ready for the question and answer. So anything's fair game to Omar. Um, he's excited to answer any questions we have. So while you're thinking of questions, I'm going to go ahead and ask a couple. Um, what, are, what are some things that a student can do to have better chances of getting into Ferris? You mentioned so, GPA and you mentioned SAT, but what, what more can a student be doing to, uh, to be accepted? Yes, so at this point, uh, we're, 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 what we're trying to do as an institution is uh, trying to eliminate any barrier to get a student into Ferris State. We understand that these are very different times and maybe not everybody has quick, as quick of access to tra transcripts as they may have in the past or even to sign up for a test as they have in the past. So historically, to get into Ferris State, we only look at GPA and SAT, and um, that's, that's the only criteria that we look at. Um, as of now, we're looking just at GPA, and then we'll worry about an SAT later when you can. And as of now, we are actually allowing students to self-report their own GPA for processing purposes, but we would like to get a transcript as soon as possible. And even as of now, we're also accepting unofficial transcripts. Um, if you can get off, a, if you could print off a PDF and email it to the admissions office, um, we're, we're able to even process your, your application that way. So we're, we're really big on trying to eliminate any barrier to application and getting, getting your decision letter out as quick as possible. Okay. Um, is there financial aid available to students who transfer to a four-year university? So if they're transferring in from a community college, is there still financial aid available? Absolutely. So we do have financial aid available, uh, transfer scholarships. They work very similar to our automatic scholarships for our, our incoming freshmen. Um, the only difference is that we look at the GPA for our incoming transfer students. Uh, so your GPA at your previous institution, whether that be a community college or maybe you get your start off at another university, but maybe it's not a good fit, you'd like to transfer to Ferris State, we look at your cumulative GPA and you'd be eligible for a scholarship as long as you have 12 transferable credits. Uh, the key word is transferable credits. What that means in a nutshell is that they have to be 100 level classes or higher. So math 101, math 110, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we will, it has to be a credit bearing class. Sometimes you may take a class that's like an 095 or uh, a remedial class as they're called if you need a little bit of a catching up in certain subjects like math or reading. Um, there has to be a credit bearing class. So as long as you have 12 credits, which is the equivalent of just one semester at a community college, our scholarships, I believe, start at um, 3.0 or higher. And I can actually pull that up just to double check. Um, can, just one moment, just to double check. Transfer scholarships start at 3.0. So as long as you have a 3.0, you'll get, um, oh, let me get the dollar amount. You'll get at least a $2,500 scholarship every year for four years. Okay. Any questions from participants or should I just keep going with the questions I have? Cause I have lots more to ask you about Omar cause I wanna know all about yeah. Paris. And I also have something to share. Um, something that's going on right now is our uh, application. Um, well, commissioning a college month, I should say, uh, at Ferris State and I uh, just wanted to plug that any student that applies before November 1st at 1159 p.m. is going to automatically be entered to win one of several scholarships. We have, I forgot how many of each ones, but we do have a couple scholarships valued up to $2,000. So I think we have like four or 500 ones, uh, two $1,000 ones, and then two like $2,000 scholarships. So several scholarships in varying amounts that students could uh, randomly get they are um, automatically entered as long as they apply anytime between now and um, November 1st. 
Great. Mm -hmm. So maybe you mentioned it, but is there a deadline for applying to Ferris? Do we have to do it by a certain time? So Ferris actually has rolling admissions, so there is no deadline to apply to oh. Ferris State University. The deadlines that you want to look out for, though, if, if, they, if it's something that is important to you, is possibly our scholarship deadlines. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking to apply for any of our uh, comp competitive scholarships, those have a, a window of opportunity from December 1st through March 1st. Uh, so if, you, okay. if you're looking to get a scholarship, you might want to apply and get accepted before then so you can apply for some, some of the extra scholarships from us from Ferris State. But we've accepted students all the way up through middle of July, towards the end of July, last minute. And as long as you meet a GPA criteria for incoming freshmen or transfer students, you'll still be eligible for any of our automatic scholarships, regardless of how late you apply. Awesome. So another question I have is about sports and activities on campus. Um, I know that you have sports because I know you have a hockey team, but yeah. <laughs> what do you have for someone who's not, I'm not, I may not be real big into sports, but I'd like to play and I'm not yeah. like a professional, but do you have intramural or what does that look like? Yeah, so we actually offer three different levels of sports at Ferris State. So as you mentioned, NCAA Division II for most of our sports, we, we are Division I for men's ice hockey. So that is uh, how, to, how you, students participate in that. They're typically recruited by the coaches or go to an open tryout or walk on days to try to get on a team. That is uh, for NCAA Division II. For um, club sports, club sports is kind of like the next tier down. Club sports are a nice way to play competitively, competitively at the collegiate level, uh, but not be held to the standards of NCAA. So they operate kind of like a student organization and you can do a little bit of travel in state, sometimes out of state, depending on if your club, whatever club team you're part of would like to participate in a tournament or an event um, out of state or in around the state if you'd like to. So there's quite a bit more variety for the club sports. We offer a lot of, uh, and most of them are, are, are um, we have both men's and women's teams for. So if you wanted to try club rugby for men's or women's, we have men's club soccer, we have women's um, equestrian, um, something that's very big at Ferris State is that we have um, disc golf and ultimate frisbee. So disc sports are really big at Ferris State. We actually won three national championships in di disc golf at Ferris State for club disc golf. And uh, um, two of those were back to back, which was really interesting. So disc golf is very big at Ferris State. And then um, if you don't want to travel, if you don't want to play as competitive, as competitively, you can always uh, do what's called intramural sports. Intramural sports are all on campus. You don't have to travel anywhere. Usually they happen in our gym or the recreation center. And then we also have some designated um, intramural fields on campus too. So that's for like uh, soccer and all that. All of our intramural teams are co-ed and every semester or every couple months, there's usually a new season for another, another league to start. So if you don't wanna uh, travel anywhere, you just wanna get a group of friends together and get a little exercise in the gym, that's a great way to do so. And, and uh, we do offer some really cool uh, prizes for our uh, intramural champions. I think this year we actually had some really cool masks that say like intramural champs on them. So quite fitting for this time. Yeah. Um, and then we also have, if you don't want to compete or anything, the gym always has open time slots for different things. So there's open court. If you just want to shoot around, play basketball. If you just wanted to play open volleyball, um, the pool, we have a pool on campus, half Olympic size pool, if you just want to swim around. So um, we have something for every level of activity. If you wanted to be competitive or if you just wanted to chill and just kind of move around a little bit. So every, everything in between. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What about if I hate sports, but I want to do other things on campus? Do you have other, is there like clubs or what about mentoring? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. So uh, Ferris State for being as uh, small of a school as we are, we offer over 240 something different uh, student organizations which is kind of like the backbone of the, the student life on campus. So we have everything from cultural organizations to faith-based organizations to uh, many professional organizations. So let's just say you are part of a major, so um, business. So if you want to be part of like um, a, a business honor society, it's kind of like a, a fraternity, if you will. Um, you can be a part of that and be active in, in your business uh, organization. Um, Pre-nursing club, my younger brother, I mentioned him earlier, he was part of a... Um, a nationally recognized um, heating, ventilation, cooling, cooling student organization. And being part of these organizations is pretty cool. Uh, a lot of times you get to go to conferences 
that have to do with your major and you can mix and mingle with a lot of employers out there or, um, or, or meet people in the industry to learn some things. Um, I know just by going to several conferences that were paid for uh, by Ferris State University, my younger brother was able to get three different job offers before he graduated by some of the employers that he mingled with in different areas, California, Atlanta, Chicago. Um, but those opportunities were all, all paid for for being part of that student organization. Um, we have many, many um, social organizations as well. So some fun stuff, so video game clubs, um, I think uh, spike balls, another one too, that's kind of like a club sport, but it's a student organization. Anything you might be interested in, usually the first week of school, we have what's called Bulldog Bonanza. And uh, all of our student organizations, for the most part, have a table set up in the, the big quad area, the, the, the green space that's outside. So you'll get hundreds of tables and you just walk up and down and see what student organizations are available. And you can sign up and see what times that they meet. So that's really cool. So you can figure, find something that you're interested in. And if you, if you like it, great, keep going to the meetings. If you don't, no harm, no fouls, not a good fit for you. You can just keep it moving. Um, and we also have Greek life too. So um, Greek life uh, for as small of an organization as we is, uh, as a, as an as a institution as we are, uh, we actually have a very strong Greek life presence on campus. So um, Greek life is uh, pretty big on campus and um, a lot of uh, volunteer opportunities, philanthropy opportunities with, um, with Greek life on campus as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's a lot going on there. There's a lot. And um, I'm very proud of our students for coming up with really innovative ways to keep it going on campus, even though it might seem Walking through campus, it might seem a little quieter than usual. A lot is going on online, a lot is going on behind the scenes, and I know our students are gonna be ready to go once things start opening uh, more, more up again. Awesome. Emma or anyone else, do you have questions? Because I can just keep asking. I have a question. Going yeah. back to the admissions process, so mm -hmm. once a student submits their application, how long does it typically take for them to hear about their admi admissions decision and how is that communicated? Is it communicated via email? Do they get something in the mail? Yes, so at this time, uh, we are, we are, our turnaround time is typically seven to 10 business days. Uh, we've been operating pretty quickly though, uh, with uh, allowing the self-reporting and ju doing just the, uh, the, uh, the test optional. So we've been working pretty quickly and admissions decisions are actually going to be sent out via email, virtual, a virtual packet with all of the students' um, login information for their student accounts and all that, so you can, they can get that set up. Um, so we're not mailing anything out at this time. Um, just uh, We decided as an institution that it's safer for everybody, um, not have to worry about it, and um, no delays or anything like that. So we're emailing that to students. So we tell students all the time, like, hey, make sure you check your inbox if you haven't heard anything. And we can see when a packet was sent and also uh, to what email account it was sent as well so on our end. So we can at least tell us soon, like, hey, you might want to check your Gmail. Sometimes it shows up in the promotions box. Um, so double, just double check that. Um, so that's what we're doing as far as um, admissions decisions. So we're actually doing it, it's going pretty quick. And like I said, we're trying to eliminate any barrier to admissions for students at this point. Um, so I, I applaud the um, efforts of our of our administration to, to, to allow us to do that. We've kind of capitalized on our already established test optional. We just kind of made it more, a little more efficient and we're like, hey, we don't have to start a new test optional. We have a test optional already. So let's go ahead and uh, build on this and, and, and let's try to make it quicker for our students. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I have two more questions. Yeah. And then if we don't have any more, um, one of those kind of goes back to uh, applying and things to do on campus, but it has more to do with academics. What if I'm a student that really, I know I want to go to college, I really like Ferris, but I don't know really what I want to do. Uh, how much help is there for career advising or how, who helps you pick out classes? And is there a lot of guidance and, and someone there kind of to work through that with you to make sure that you're on track? Yeah, so what we have for our undecided students, um, that's, that's completely normal if you don't know what you want to do for the rest of your life right when you're coming out of high school. Um, that's very normal. Uh, what we offer students at Ferris is that uh, we have, we, we declare your major as career exploration. Career exploration lasts your first semester of your freshman year. And in career exploration, 
students are going to take classes that all students have to take regardless of whatever major you're going into. So no matter if you're a business student, nursing student, engineering student, all students have to take some sort of math. All students have to take some sort of uh, reading, writing, um, some sort of cultural elective uh, science class that has a lab attached to it. So um, regardless of what you're going into, to get a bachelor's degree, there are required classes, general education classes, uh, no matter what program you're going into. So you'll take those classes, uh, general education classes, and also once a week for an hour, you're going to take a class called Career Exploration 101. It's a one credit class. So it does, you do get credit for it, one credit class. And that is with a career counselor. And in this class, students research different careers, um, explore different uh, uh, careers and majors, take some personality tests, some aptitude tests to figure out what you like to do and what careers and majors best fit what you like to do. And we help you declare a major before the second semester of your freshman year starts and you're still on track to graduate in four years. So the benefit of being kind of a smaller, medium-sized school is that we have the capacity to give you a little bit more attention in the classroom um, than maybe a much larger school with a giant lecture hall. Um, and be, having smaller student to faculty ratio, we can give you that attention um, if you need that on campus, absolutely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking of more questions. Yeah, so absolutely. Keep asking them. But keep we keep will going, keep them coming. Up. Well, not to go past like a, in about five minutes. So yeah, you good. Um, I know that a lot of our students in, in Oceana and Mason uh, counties are eligible in Manistee are eligible for TIP, the Tuition Incentive Program. And I know that Ferris State University is one of the only universities that I see that accepts phase one. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Absolutely. So um, yes, we, I, I believe we are still the largest recipient in the state of Michigan of the Tuition Incentive Program. So in a nutshell, um, there's a fine print to this, but um, if you've ever had Medicaid for at least two years of your life from elementary school through high school, um, you're probably eligible for the tuition incentive program or TIP funds. Um, and what TIP funds do as far as phase one at Ferris State, it pays for your entire first two years of tuition up to 12 credits at Ferris State University. So Ferris State is one of very few four year universities that accept the tuition incentive program. A lot of students hear about TIP and know that you can use it at any community college, which is, yes, you can. Um, but if you'd like to get your start at Ferris State, if you know what you want to get into, uh, want to go for courts, um, you can use it at Ferris State. So um, if you think you might be eligible, talk to your counselors or you can talk to me. We can have a conversation and check with the state of Michigan to see if you're eligible. Um, and then um, you do need a FAFSA on file in order to receive those funds. Um, so FAFSA on file and then also um, the TIP website, the TIP portal, the Michigan Student Portal. Um, those are a few steps we can help you out with that, either myself or our financial aid office to see if you're eligible. And um, all you have to do is list Ferris State as the school that, you, that you're interested in, your first choice, and that's how you receive your funds uh, to, to attend Ferris State um, as far as tuition. So, um, and something else that we do see with students who qualify for TIP is that we do see a correlation that a lot of those students may qualify for some kind of Pell Grant, uh, whether that's full Pell Grant or half a Pell Grant. So um, chances are you might be eligible for some other free money that you don't have to pay back as well. So this is a program by the state of Michigan, tuition incentive program, um, and that is free money from the state of Michigan. But you do have to be, you have to qualify and be eligible for that. Um, and then at the end of phase one, phase one counts for your first two years of tuition at Ferris State. Uh, phase two kicks in your junior year or your third year at Ferris State. So um, it's not as much money, but you get $1,000 a year, comes out to 500 bucks a semester. But um, that's really good to go towards books on campus. So uh, mm -hmm. it takes care of most students' books for the year, which is great. Um, so still a huge ex expense that's taken care of from the TIP program. So we accept both TIP part one and two, which is very um, un uncommon to see for four-year universities. Awesome. Well, I know that the counselors and the college advisors will be sharing a lot more with the students who are eligible yes. for TIP, but I Perfect. just wanted you to mention that because I know you are one of the only mm -hmm. uh, of the few universities in, very few. in the state who accept that. So yeah. another quick question. Mm -hmm. I have two more, and I know I've said that like seven times ago. <laughs> um, are, are students able to do campus visits? Like, can they come to campus right now, or is it all virtual, or what does that look like? So yes to all that. So we're proud to say that we've actually started uh, doing in-person visits lately. So um, what we have going on for in-person visits, it's very limited, though. So um, we would love to have 30 families at a time and take you onto campus to the for dinner at the Rock and all that good stuff. But um, unfortunately, you know, to keep everybody safe, we're doing one-on-one -on -one, 
family, uh, one family at a time visits. And that's in the form of a go-kart or golf cart ride around campus. So we have these really fancy golf carts that seat like six people, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. We ask that you just keep it to three people or less. And mm -hmm. um, one, of my, one of us admissions reps, either myself or um, one of our other team members will uh, take you around campus. We can show you two different uh, examples of housing on campus. And uh, we can also take you into the Student Recreation Center. And we'll also point out different facilities that are on there. And then um, sometimes, and what we've done in the past too, is if you let us know ahead of time uh, what programs you might be interested in, we can try to schedule a visit with yourself and that program while you're on campus as well. Um, not everything is completely open on campus and not all of us, as far as faculty and staff, are on campus all the time. A lot of us are working remotely. Like myself, I'm actually working from home right now. Um, a lot of us are rotating like one weekend, two weeks out, work from home. So um, just let us know ahead of time and we can try to do our best to see if there's somebody there that can meet you. Uh, we also have virtual visits. Virtual visits are going great as well. So if you'd like to sign up for a virtual visit, um, that's all through the, the Ferris website, ferris.edu forward slash visit. Very easy. So ferris.edu, just visit and then it'll give you all the options. Um, and then we also have our daily visit presentation. So it's kind of like a modified version of our visits that we usually have on campus. It's just a, a presentation and it, there's usually several of the other students or families that have signed up at the same time to view it virtually on Zoom. So I know I'm doing one next week. It's usually from four, four to four forty-five. So it's towards the end of the day, uh, four to four forty-five. Most more, most weekdays those are offered as well. If you'd like to just um, come in for a Ferris presentation, then we also something special that we do with that is that for the last fifteen minutes um, we do have a student panel. So it's some of our student workers that are there to answer questions for any of our, any any of our guests that are viewing the the virtual visit, the virtual presentation. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Last question, I yeah. promise. <laughs> no um, I know you have a lot of supports on campus for yeah. students. We have a lot of students who might be the first in their family to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about one in particular that I'm familiar with is the Center for Latino Studies, mm -hmm. but I know that there are others. Can you mm -hmm. tell me just a little bit about the Center for Latino Studies? Yeah, so Center for Latino Studies, uh, we are very proud of that center. We're uh, the third institution in the state of Mich Michigan to have a center like that. Um, and there's a lot of programming that operates out of there. So one of the big programming um, opportunities that we have are, is our PROMESA program, which we do have a site in um, Oceana County. So a lot of Hart and Shelby students attend the PROMESA Summer Success Program, where students in the summertime, sophomores up, can take uh, two uh, classes from Ferris State University free of charge. Um, so it's an eight-week eight uh, session where students can um, take a math class and a reading writing class and a college prep class, but uh, six credits offered free of charge from Ferris State University, which is uh, a great opportunity. So a lot of students who might not have thought that college was possible were given you two free college classes and a college ID. You are a Ferris student for the summertime. So any um, rising sophomores are up, um, are eligible for that program, and any student from there that is, el that is interested in attending Ferris um, when they do attend college, uh, will be eligible for a thousand dollar scholarship. Um, it's the same as our dual enrollment scholarship. So uh, students can get a free scholarship for participating in the PROMESA program. Uh, the Center for Latino Studies also works as kind of like a support office where we update a database of scholarships for um, Latinx students. And, and specifically, we, we look for uh, scholarships that are for, for maybe of our DACA undocumented students out there. So um, we know in the state of Michigan, there might not be as many, or even as an institution, we might not offer anything for specifically for DACA students, but we have a database of nationally recognized um, uh, organizations or entities that, are, that have scholarships for students that might fall under the DACA undocumented um, a category. And um, also on campus, uh, much like our Center for Latino Studies, we do have our um, Office of Multicultural Student Services. So it's another support office for um, any students, all students on campus. And they, they have a really nice mentorship program in their towers. So towers, you get paired up with a mentor, which is typically either our uh, director or assistant director of our Office of Multicultural Student Services. And they're there to just check in on you. They, if you give them permission, they can check on your grades and you might need that extra support and some of that tough love on campus uh, if you need right. to. So if you need like somebody to look up to, they can say, hey, tell me what's going on in this class. You know, like, yeah, I don't think you should be going out as much or, hey, I see you hanging out over here. Maybe you, you, you come in the library, let's get this homework done. So some of that uh, more, um, I think uh, Kaylee Moreno calls it in our Center for Latino Studies, she calls it intrusive advising. Um, right. So we have, we have a couple areas on campus where students can get that. 
And then also we have um, probably our newest center on campus is our um, LGBTQ plus uh, resource center. So um, they have, they've started to do some programming. Um, the, we have a, a part-time staff in there right now and a lot of student workers um, in there right now. So a resource center for any of our LGBTQ plus students. Um, I know that they put on a lot of events on campus. Um, they have a lot of uh, fun stuff going on on campus. So the big one is the Lavender graduation every single year or every semester, I should say. Lavender graduation, which is like a nationally recognized type of graduation ceremony where students get a specific uh, sash and uh, I think a cord too for, for graduation. So um, a lot of support offices. We have veteran support office as well. So for any students that might be um, in the military or thinking about going in the military, we do have a veteran support office. And uh, Jake, Jake Schrott, who is, um, he kind of splits his time between the admissions office and the Veterans Resource Center. Um, he is our veterans rep and he's active duty. Um, I think he's National Guard. I don't want to get incorrect. I believe he's National Guard um, at this time. And um, so he, he, he knows it. He knows the paperwork. So if you want to see your benefits, anything you're eligible for, and he can also let you know any of the, the scholarships or grants that uh, might, might be in partnership with Ferris State University. I know we have a couple out there. You can give you the necessary paperwork to fill out every single year and just keep you on track with that with your benefits. Um, so if you have any students that are, that are it did, did the uh, uh, basic training over the summertime, like over uh, summer of junior year into senior year and um, are looking to come to college, we definitely have uh, resources for students on campus. Awesome. Sounds like you pretty much include everything a student would need, huh? Yeah, I, we try and I think so. Right. <laughs> it's a lot of information to take it in a very short amount of time. It so. is. Well, thanks for meeting with us. Um, if you yeah, thank you. your contact information into the chat, yes. um, we'll make sure that that gets shared out as well and that this recording does get shared with uh, many students um, as they're looking at college application months. So hopefully awesome. look for lots of applications from the west side, uh, yes. the best side, and we'll, uh, <laughs> we look forward to sending some students your way. So thanks for awesome, meeting with us awesome. today, Omar, yes, and thank I'll, you. I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Thank you all for the opportunity. Yep, just hit me up. It's really easy. Omar Gonzalez at Ferris.edu. So my first name, last name. Uh, very simple. And um, we are all, all of our departments are still working. So um, we're, a lot of us just might be working from home. So um, awesome. we'll, keep, keep hitting us up. We're, we're, we're still working. Very good. Thanks, Omar. Have a good Thank day. Thank you all so much. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.